And what's going on everyone? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today. I'm Zach Davis and I want to talk today about Satan and Revelation chapter 20, specifically deceiving the nations. So don't forget to like and subscribe down below. Follow us on patreon.com slash Zach Davis. You can support us there if you want to give to the ministry. I am, for the last few videos, I've been, you know, just searching out, studying, playing with the idea of Satan as Old Covenant Israel and just trying to harmonize and fit those pieces together. So today I want to take a look at Revelation chapter 20 and how Satan fits in the first four verses there and see if I can make some connections to some other places. Maybe this will be helpful to you and just kind of keep us thinking along some of these lines. So Revelation 20 and Satan, let's look at it this way. I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. All right, first idea here is bound. You remember Jesus says in Mark chapter 3 and in some other places that he must first bind the strong man before he can plunder his house. He must first bind the strong man before he can plunder his house. And if you remember... This kingdom that Old Covenant Israel has is going to be taken from them and given to Christ Jesus. So he's taken over their kingdom. You can make that connection and think, all right, Satan being bound. If that's Israel, then Christ has taken it. He's going to rule it. And remember, guys, I'm not saying where I'm at. Satan's not a spiritual entity. He is a spiritual. I, I'm studying. So I'm trying to, to fit all this together. I come from the same background and understanding that you did. But we're just trying to fit Old Covenant Israel into Satan and see if this stuff works. So. That's what we're doing. So he binds him for a thousand years. And then in verse three, he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up, set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And one idea that caught my mind there, essentially what you have is Satan's being thrown out of heaven down to the earth he's bound and this reminds me of our study last week in revelation chapter 12 when the accuser of the brethren was thrown down out of heaven and he lost his power well now you can see here in verse 3 that he should not deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished that's the same idea as losing his power the accuser of the brethren being thrown down so we want to answer the question in this video specifically if israel is satan did Israel deceive the nations? And we want to just look at the text and kind of see if we can make some connections. Genesis 12, 3. God told Abram, I will bless those who bless you, curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So one of Israel's purposes was to be a light and a blessing to all the rest of the world. They should have looked at Israel, realized all that God had done for them, known that they were the covenant people of God, and then believed in Yahweh. Israel should have been a light to them. That's the way that this thing should have worked. But that is not the way that it worked because of some stuff that we'll get to in just a second. Therefore, be careful, Deuteronomy 4, 6, to observe them, for this is your wisdom and understanding in the sight of the peoples who will hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. So they should look at Israel, think that they're wise, that they're understanding, that God's favor is on them. Just like when they got to Jericho, you might remember all the people had already heard, man, God's done all these great things for Israel. They should look at them and want to come and worship Yahweh. And then what happens? Well, Israel gets in the land. Israel wants a king like all the other nations. They begin to play the harlot. Uh, Solomon even takes all these other foreign women who have foreign gods that they worship. By the time you get to the book of Ezekiel, you just get an absolute thrash fest as God declares that Israel has become a harlot and she's not even a good harlot. She's playing the harlot with all these other nations, but instead of her receiving payment, she's making payment to them. She should have been leading people to Yahweh, but instead she was playing the harlot, taking other gods, leading them astray, making them drunk with the wine of her fornication and wasn't doing the job that God had called her to do. You can connect that idea to the idea of deceiving the nations. Well, when we get to the first century, we get to the book of Revelation, we see Babylon the harlot. Uh, we see that this harlot is dressed exactly like the priesthood was in Exodus chapter 28. We see in Revelation chapter 17, verse 6, that she was going to have judgment poured out on her 
for killing the prophets and the martyrs of Jesus and the saints, exactly like Jesus predicted in Matthew 23. On this generation, this judgment's going to come because you're sons of those who murdered the prophets. If you take any partial preterist even view and put the tribulation in the past, then what you're going to find is that this beast, this harlot, the, the woman that is sitting on the beast, is Old Covenant Israel. And that's a pretty standard and generic view. Take Chilton's work, take a lot of guys' work in that. So, I mean, gentry, all of them. You take that work. Israel is this harlot woman. But when we get to Revelation 18, we get some interesting language that connects my mind back to Revelation 20 and deceiving the nations. So look with me at Revelation chapter 18, and we'll see if we can't figure some of this out. I'm going to read a decent bit in Revelation 18, starting in the beginning. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon, this is Babylon the harlot, this great woman, she's fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Okay, she's made them drunk. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. Okay, so this woman's making everybody drunk. They're getting rich off of her. They're in bed together. That's the harlot imagery. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her. When they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. Verse 15. The merchants of these things who became rich by her will stand at a distance for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, the great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet. There's priesthood language back from chapter 17 to Exodus 28 and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. They threw dust on their heads and cried out, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, the great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she is made desolate. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23. See, your house is left to you desolate. Rejoice over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets. Remember the heaven language from Revelation 12, how Paul said that they that those who believed in Jesus had been raised up and seated in the heavenlies. So this harlot woman was persecuting the Christians, but now she's been thrown down. They've been vindicated and raised up. Rejoice over her, you children of God who believed in the Messiah. For the old apostate harlot has been thrown down. For God has avenged you on her. And if you'll remember, that vengeance language is going to take you back to Matthew chapter 23. Jesus said, and in that generation, that God would avenge the blood of all of those martyrs from Matthew 23, and you can look at verses 34 to 36. It was all going to come in that generation. Remember Revelation chapter 6. The martyrs were crying out under the altar, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you avenge our blood? He said, Just a little while longer. Well, that judgment came when Babylon the harlot was thrown down, and she was thrown down and judged, and her house was left desolate, just like Jesus had predicted. But the next part's the one that should interest you. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you anymore. Remember that Old Covenant Israel was pictured as a light, but she'd become darkness. Then Jesus comes on the scene in the Gospels, and we start getting all the quotations from Isaiah when it talks about those who were in the darkness had seen a great light because Jesus now would be the light. Revelation chapter 21, there's no need for the sun or moon in the city because Jesus the Son is the light. That's the picture of the church that Christ is the leader. And the voice of a bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you anymore. She's not going to be wet anymore. There's a divorce that's happening. This is why so many people connect divorce language to the harlot as Christ will judge and divorce her and take a new bride in Revelation chapter 19, the church. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery, all the nations were what? Deceived. Remember Revelation chapter 20? She would not be able to deceive the nations any longer. And in her was found the blood of the saints and the prophets of all who were slain on the earth. Now I want to go back to Revelation 20. Notice that language, that they were deceived by Babylon the harlot. Okay, remember, we're trying to make connections to Satan and Israel. It says in verse 3, 
he was cast into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. You say, Zach, how does that play out? Give me a timeline. Help me out here. Well, if Satan is old covenant Israel, then she's bound during the beginning of the ministry of Christ. She was deceiving the nations, but as the gospel goes out, even though they were persecuting the church, if you didn't watch my last video in Revelation 12, go read 1 Peter 5, 8, when it talks about your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Then go back and read Ezekiel 22, 23 to 25, when Ezekiel says that Israel's false prophets were going around to the people and chasing them down like lions, seeking whom they may devour. Peter is borrowing that language, applying that Satan imagery to Israel's false leaders who were deceiving the nations. But they couldn't overcome them. They couldn't overcome them as the gospel went forth so that the whole world now, instead of being deceived by the old covenant system, the new covenant followers of Jesus with all the miraculous gifts that God had given them were overcoming and the gospel was spreading. And that's why Revelation chapter 20 says that she could deceive the nations no more. Well, I think I'll end that there, but you can at least see the idea that Revelation chapter 18 is very, very, very clear that down in verse 23, the merchants were great men of the earth. So the whole world, by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. Okay. And who deceived them? In her, the woman was found the blood of the prophets and the saints of all who were slain on the earth. Well, we know who that is. Jesus said that judgment was coming on Jerusalem. She's the woman, she's the harlot, and she's the one that was deceiving the earth. So is it possible that the language that's being used for the harlot is the same language that's being applied to Satan, just calling her by a different name? I think it's possible. Am I saying that's where I am? No, but I think that's at least an interesting study. So if you had to say, well, could Israel be Satan deceiving the nations in Revelation 20? Your answer could be absolutely yes, according to Revelation chapter 18 and verse 23, where she's doing just that. Like and subscribe down below. God bless you, and I will see you soon.